Hi, I'm Dr. Errol Zdaga. I'm a Stanford doctor, a hospitalist, and a member of the Stanford Medicine 25. This is a brief video on the approach to diastolic murmurs. So it's important to note with all diastolic murmurs, they are pathologic. The four most common ones that we'll deal with are aortic regurgitation. There's a handful of causes for that one, and you can learn more of that with our other video. Mitral stenosis, most commonly seen in rheumatic heart disease or a congenital causes. Also, an atrial myxoma will present an exam similar to mitral stenosis. Pulmonic regurge, most commonly caused by pulmonary hypertension. Also, infective endocarditis can do it as well. And lastly, tricuspid stenosis, probably the least common of them all, usually seen in something such as carcinoid heart disease, if found by itself. Hola, Mr. Hello. Garcia. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. So we're going to listen to Mr. Garcia's heart and see what's going on there. Since you can't palpate his arteries, we put these sticks here so you can see when his heart is contracting in systole. So as I place my stethoscope at the left lower sternal border around intercostal space three or four, and I see the stick move, I hear a murmur when the stick has, after the stick is moved. So as I put my stethoscope at the left lower sternal border around intercostal space three and four, I hear a murmur that occurs after the stick moves or after systole occurring during diastole. So Mr. Garcia has a diastolic murmur and it's coming from one of his four valves. So if Mr. Garcia has aortic regurgitation, we expect to hear the murmur loudest at the left lower stonal border and potentially louder when he leans forward in end expiration that brings the heart closer to the chest wall. However, if he has pulmonic regurgitation, it's less common but we want to make sure he doesn't have that. The murmur is actually heard at the left upper sternal border around intercostal space two or three. It can be difficult to differentiate between those two murmurs by auscultation alone. That's why it's important to look for peripheral signs of aortic regurgitation, such as bounding carotid pulses or Corgan's pulse, or bounding pulses in the arms called water hammer's pulse. So in looking for mitral stenosis, have your patient in the left lateral decubitus position. Use the bell of your stethoscope and listen at the intercostal space 5 midclavicular area right around the nipple. That's where you'll hear it loudest. His murmur is less loud in this area, making that less likely. For the tricuspid stenosis murmur, you'll want to listen at the left lower sternal border using the bell of your stethoscope, again, just like in mitral stenosis. In this situation, it can be difficult to appreciate an isolated tricuspid stenosis because it rarely occurs. Tricuspid stenosis is associated in isolation with carcinoid heart disease. If you hear tricuspid stenosis, you'll often hear a fixed split S1 because of delayed closure of the tricuspid valve, and you can make the tricuspid stenosis murmur louder during inspiration, bringing blood flow, more blood into the right side of the heart. So Mr. Garcia, has a murmur that's loudest at the left lower sternal border. It's loudest when he's sitting up and leaning forward, and it's associated with bounding pulses in his neck. This is clearly the murmur of aortic regurgitation by exam alone. One last thing, look out for continuous murmurs that can be caused by rare things such as a patent ductus arteriosus or arteriovenous fistulas nearby. Also, friction rubs will have a diastolic and systolic component, but a much more grainy quality. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. Visit the Stanford Medicine 25 website for more information. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.